And do you care about the environment? Do you care about how we manage waste? Do you care about all that concerns you and where you stay, where you work, or where your family members even stay? Well, today on the show, we have a BSc and MSc graduate of the Lagos State University. And also, he is actually the winner of the Rehab Plus Innovation, a United Kingdom International Competition for Africa 2006. And also, one of the top 100 of our generation list of entrepreneurs and waste managers for 2007. I'm talking about no other person but Adewale Taiwo Adeboyega. Welcome on Hello Nigeria today. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. I don't know if you watched the documentary that just played, the one by the IREP Film Festival, and there was a segment where we had um, Shegun Williams Abiola and she talked about you know, waste management in Nigeria and the fact that we have a problem in Lagos. Now, I recall that you wrote um, a paper at the Bahrain First Zero Waste um, yes. Tolerance Program. And you talked about managing, um, I think, towards sustainable waste, waste management, management in an emerging me mega city, a, a case, case study, study of, of Lagos. Lagos Let's use Lagos as this case study. Okay. What would you say would be the necessary steps for us to achieve sustainable waste management in Lagos State? Okay, first and foremost, we, even look at, we need to look at the volume of waste Generated in Lagos, we generate between 10 to 10,000 to 15,000 tons of waste every day. So you can imagine a mega city, 15,000 tons every day, and you, you need to look at the number of vehicles. Each of those compactors, each one is just a 10 ton. So divide 15,000 tons by 10 every day. So we have like almost 15,000 trucks on the road every day. Now, when you look at this waste, people call it waste, but I don't call it waste, I call it resources. Because if you look at those waste, you have aluminum can, you have paper, you have nylon. Each of those items are useful when it comes to recycling. And those that can't be reused, those that can't be recycled, those that can't be, uh, I mean, reused, then they end up at the dump site or the land fee. Even at that land fee, they are still useful. If you remember some months ago, the Olishutu dump site was on fire. That dump site, they didn't put fire on it. It was the gas, they maintained gas from the waste that ignites and caught fire. So which means those that are not useful buried there, the gas can be tapped, and the gas there can power the whole of Ikeja. If the government has done the right thing, the gas from that dump site can power the whole of Ikeja industrial estate. But nobody is looking into that. OK, so waste management is one of the major issues of Lagos, and likely Nigeria as it stands. Exactly. I've been to states like Onitsha, um, in Anambra state, cities Even like Onitsha. Aba, of course, is one major place that has waste as an issue. Now. If, since you've said, there are some ways that are actually reusable useful. and very useful, useful exactly. what are the ways that we can actually use or what are the ways that our government can help? And we as a people, too, are parts that we can play okay. in making sure that waste management is an issue that is dealt with. Yeah, I states. think the, the best way the government can come in is providing infrastructure. And start from the household, they should introduce what, what I call the two-bin system you have one being for recyclables and the other for non-recyclables. And like I told you, each of these items, they are valuables. For instance, you, from your plastic bottles alone, you can produce T-shirts, you can produce mattress, even the weave on the women are using that, the Chinese are producing weave on from those plastic bottles. When you talk of your aluminum can, your refill sheet, your spoon, and everything you use, is from those aluminum can. So why import veggie materials when we have the material locally here? It will save us a lot of dollars. So, but to start with, right from your house, start separating your waste. I keep on giving a very good example. Those mala, those aboki you see, they are millionaires. I them. Yeah, they are millionaires. Because once they come to your house, you give them your waste, you give them 200 naira, 300 naira. They have a central place they go to with those waste. They sit down and separate those waste. They separate the plastic. The plastic bottle is selling for 32,000 naira per ton. Why those aluminum can is 180,000 naira per ton. But once they just come, aboki take my waste away. He's taking away the waste. See people making money on that. He's, he's taking that. away the waste. You are still giving him money, 200 naira. Go away with my waste. But have you ever asked him, Aboki, where they carry this waste to? When you see where they sit down, in fact, there's a particular guy that traveled with from the north to bring about 20 of them, gave them the cart. They go around and bring in the waste. They sit down and separate the waste. The last time I spoke with one of them, that was, somebody gave him 6 million naira to start looking for aluminum can for the next six months. Wow. So it doesn't have to wait on the end of the month before, so they make that instant money. So, and when government said they want to ban them, they are the informal sector. So in this waste management industry, you can't do away with the informal, but you just need to regulate that way. Because most of them, they don't wear a glove, 
you need to look at the health issue because some of those ways contain medical waste, syringe and so on. So what government need to do is study these people. I've taken my time to study them, talk to most of them, and if you calculate, if they go to like 10 houses in a day, you give them to 200 naira, then they now go to the central place where they put all those with. You see the aluminum can, the nylon, the carton, every single item there is very useful. They are money. And we have people fighting for it every day. Well, I need nylon, I need carton, I need... They are making money. And they produce, like I told you, from the plastic bottles, your mattress, your carpet, your T-shirt, even the Chinese are doing women with them. Then if you look at that bottle, the cap, the cover alone is another raw material. Those are plastic anger you use. Your plastic bucket is produced from just the cover alone. Mm. So you can I, see the raw material. You just opened our eyes to a, a gold mine that's in exactly. beneath our noses and we're not exploring. Beyond us looking at the fact that we don't need to import these materials, when we have the raw materials, if we, have, if we can have a structure, not only are we, uh, we're, we're creating more employment opportunities, we're saving the climate. We are That's, creating employment, exactly. raw materials, and at the same time keeping the environment clean. Because mm -hmm. most of these items find their way to the drainage. Once the rainy season comes, go to any drainage, you see the plastic, the nylon floating. Which leads me to my next question, because okay. of course we are getting into the rainy season. Exactly. And we don't know what the rainfall predictions for this year stand mm -hmm. at. So how, what is the importance of us, you know, of waste management with regards to our climate? Now, not just in Nigeria, but in the world. Oh, okay. We're seeing extreme weather conditions in different parts of the world. Exactly. I was watching a documentary of what's going on, I think in Moronvia, when they have extreme air pollution. Mm -hmm. And they were checking the air pollution and seeing how it was increasing by the second. the second. And I'm telling them they should come to Portacot here. We have similar thing exactly. going on in River State. River Do you understand? State. So we don't understand the importance of waste management to our climate. I, I want you to please shed some light on yeah, that. Yeah, like, like I said, uh, I'll go back to the case of that dump site that caught fire. I told you the waste generates what is called the maintain gas. And this maintain gas is even more dangerous than the CO2. We are talking about climate change. It's more dangerous, 21 times dangerous than the normal gas, so for it to ignite, so you can imagine you having waste everywhere, and you can imagine the emission from this waste. So, and definitely this will affect the, the environment, it will affect the climate, and if you go back to that Olusho soon, like I said, a lot of, what did government put in place? Because there was no preparedness for this, and overnight the fire came, and see people, even schools surrounding, see students going to school with no masks and so on. But if it is in a developed world, they will see it coming because already there's a study done on that dump site that this is the volume of gas. Instead of wasting this gas, it can power the oil of Ikeja. So if you can power the oil of Ikeja industrial estate, then it can give the light to the domestic area and so on. So but you can see, like I said, anywhere you see waste, then you are talking about maintain gas, and this maintain gas affects the environment, then that's where the issue of climate change comes in. Okay. So waste management and climate change, they work hand in hand. Okay, I think another part of this that we need to talk about is the part of we as a people, okay. you know, and our participation in managing waste. Now, a while ago, I and Olive talked about how people just, you know, they consume something, they Free throw me. off the plastic, the nylon, the bottles or cans, anywhere they find themselves on the exactly. road or in the gutter. And then we know what we've suffered. Our gutters are filled up Between and then it's... when it rains, it's not funny. Exactly. So, what should we do as a people? We know we, we keep talking about it, but what are the other ways, aside what we know, that you think we can do yeah, to avoid it? Yeah, like, like I said, the problem has to do with awareness. With this explanation I gave now, once people are aware that, oh, with my plastic bottle, this work can be produced. With my nylon, this work can be produced. Every single item, even those black nylon bag you use in packing your waste, is produced from pure water sachet. Okay. So anytime you, tr you drink your pure water, you trade it away, somebody is picking it up, Produce those bags and you go to the market and buy for 500 naira. What you trade with? So what we need to do basically is start Sep a culture of recycling, Ex teaching people right in their from homes. The, we need to start separating exactly from their homes, their workplaces, teaching young children how to recycle in their primary schools as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. So We've been speaking much. with Adewale Taiwo, who is uh, uh, an environmentalist with several years of experience. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.